The following is a production of Stevenson Media. H-Town, what it do? I am Nick Stevenson, the president of Houston Sports Nation. Mr. 713, Ruben Calvillo is in the building. Welcome to episode 18 of the Twin Toros podcast. Before we get started, we want to continue to thank everyone who has been supporting us, whether you've been on 713 Houston Sports, Houston Sports State of the Union podcast, or you're watching us on ESPN Houston, uh, 18 episodes, and we're getting closer and closer to 20. It's been an up and down season, Ruben, but we've been enjoying talking Houston Texans football and repping H Town to the best of our ability. No, absolutely, dude. This season has been such a blast. It's so long, but it's so short, if that makes yeah. sense. But man, I'm excited, man. Thank you for everyone who's been here in the episodes, win or loss. And let's keep it going, man. We're H Town till we drown. Absolutely. So, unfortunately, mm. Ruben, we're talking about a heartbreaker. Mm. Uh not a game I anticipated being a heartbreaker. If anybody watched our last episode, mm-hmm. I did not pick the Texans to win this game. Um, yeah. However, I think all of Houston, even some of the people who didn't expect the Texans to win, were probably feeling a little bit different at halftime. Ooh. You're up 23-7 to seven mm-hmm. at halftime. You lose this game 26-23. Mm-hmm. to 23. Ruben, mm-hmm. what went wrong? What went wrong is what we've been talking about this entire year, and that is the Houston Texans offense inability to get anything going in the second half. You know how bad they are in quarters three and four, Nick? They are averaging eight points a game in the second half. In the past four weeks, you have not scored a touchdown in the second half. Now, I could do that. I could go out there and call plays for this offense in the second half, and I could expect a zero touchdowns. However, from Bobby Slowick, from someone who got head coaching interviews by multiple teams, not just one, you know, this is disappointing. And now, you know, a move has to be made. And you've seen one today from the Chicago Bears moving on from their offensive coordinator. You saw a couple of years ago when the Detroit Lions did it going to Ben Johnson midway in the season. I think it was week nine when they did it a couple of years ago. So it's not out of the ordinary to see a change of play callers. And I think the Houston Texans need that. It's kind of um, a dire situation, in my opinion, because what this team showed you on Monday, I'm sorry, Sunday night football. And I hate to say this. They are the same Houston Texans. Mm. And I and and, you know, me, Nick, that's that's one of the phrases that I loathe, that I hate. And when you beat up the crappier teams that you go against, right? And of course we can't, you know, we can't dictate our schedule, but when I say same old Houston Texans, man, I look at where we are currently six and three. I look at the rest of the schedule and I see well, four we're six wins. and four now. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know you don't four. want to take that L man, but we my got fault, to my fault, my fault, my fault. <laughs> six and four. So we're six and four, ladies and gentlemen, there are four wins where you don't need to score in the second half. The Dallas Cowboys game, the Jaguars game, and both Tennessee Titans game. That four wins right there. Nick, stop me if you heard this before. That is a 10-win season. That is an AFC South Division title. That is a home playoff win. Where have you heard that before? That's the story of the Houston Texans. That is every single Houston Texans postseason run where – you beat up on the crappy teams. You take advantage of your weak division. But we see during the season, you cannot compete with the very best. And when you get an elite performance from your defense, which shut down Ben Johnson's offense, I was so impressed and surprised that we were able to do this against the highest scoring defense in the NFL without Will Anderson Jr. You get five turnovers. You make a MVP guy, someone who rarely throws the ball away. You make him look like mediocre. You make him look like all the way he was back there on the Rams. And you lose this game. Same old Houston Texans, man. It's, uh, you know, I was live streaming the game and I could feel in halftime. Was I happy? Yes, but I knew what was coming. 
Yeah. And which is why a change needs to be made. You've heard about players only meetings. I hate those. I, I hate those with a passion in my heart because a players only meeting means that you have no trust in your coaches. And man, dude, you know, there's just signs on this team that show that, you know, we're not ready to take the next step forward. I agree with that. I can't disagree with anything you said, man. And you know, you and I have been texting each other on the side. And I don't want to say that I've been defending Bobby Sloick because I haven't. Like, he's been bad. Um, but I just, I, I get a bad taste in my mouth and I don't like the idea of overreacting to every situation that happens with this team. And I think bad teams overreact, especially the ones who overreact because of the temperature of their fan base. People were saying fire Bobby Sloick after week two. So at the time, obviously, that just seemed ridiculous. Okay. As I sit here today, I would say not fire, but I would say concerns to start it around week two. No, and no, no. I that think, was I think you. Fire, you for sure said you had concerns, but there yeah, were people and I saying think the fire. firing conversations came around four weeks ago. Fire, I mean, really? No, you're right, man. Because there were you know, some we've people been bitching and moaning <laughs> about you know Bobby all year. Yeah, 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 for sure. Now, as we sit here ten weeks in, and we see some disturbing uh, habits at this point. Um, with his play calling, there's definitely there def he should definitely be on the hot seat. I'm gonna say that much. I think um, it needs to happen already, Nick. If you want to well, save this season, I understand that. And and as you're telling me, you know, I think I think the problem for me, man, is what I think should happen and what the nature of this beast called the NFL is is two totally different things. And in in a box, saying that somebody who at one point was considered the next great head coach of the NFL yep. to go from that to 10 games later, this guy deserves to be fired in a box. That mm -hmm. seems crazy. Right. But this is the NFL man. Not and it's, long. it's uh, a, <laughs> it's short attention spans. It's short ropes. Mm -hmm. And we've seen this happen in a lot of organizations. My problem is you gave the example of Ben Johnson uh, in Detroit. First of all, up until recently, we did not consider Detroit a good franchise. And I think a lot of bad, bad franchises make emotional firings and hirings. And I just don't want to see this team slip into that. Now, what I also no, don't want to no, see. Wait, wait, wait. Go ahead. Ben Johnson. I've been on Ben Johnson for the past three years. Right. Whenever he took over play calling for Detroit, I knew it that he was going to be something special. And it worked and out. That's what I'm saying. Before that move, though. Like, that's kind of the move. Well, that's they just got Dan Campbell, right? So it yeah. was, you know, we're going to bite your kneecap. We're going to take off your cap <laughs> or whatever the hell he said. And then, yeah, yeah. you know, they, they were struggling on offense. And then they go to, you know, Ben Johnson. And it's yeah. just like it it clicked. Yeah. And, th and that's what I'm trying to say, uh, Ruben, is as much as I've been trying to say that's not the right move, um, at this point, just like I said, based on how the NFL works and how other teams work, and what you have left to possibly salvage of this season. Um, you know, I told you in a text message before we started recording that I thought they should evaluate at the end of the season. I don't know if that's right, man. And the reason I say that is because let me just, there are some really, like I said, there's some really troubling tendencies and I'll get into those in a minute. I have a video from pro football network that I want to share with everybody that really broke down just how, this offense, especially Bobby Sloak's play calling, is just slamming its head into a brick wall every week, uh, sometimes figuratively and literally. Um, but the problem I have is that ever since the beginning of the season, Bobby Sloak is not the only problem with this offense. Since the beginning of the season, uh, even last season, we've been talking about different things that were wrong with this team. Last season, it was the O-line can't run block. This season, the O-line was getting too many penalties. Then CJ at first was getting pressured too much. And then he started getting sacked too much. Now Bobby Slowick is holding him back with play calling. And now Bobby Slowick is making bad play calling and has some bad tendencies. Um, it would be a step in the right direction, I would say, if, if, if D'Amico Ryans, who I don't see as somebody who's going to make that move, it would take somebody above... It would take Cal McNair to come in and say, hey, we need to shake something up. 
I don't well, think I'm glad I you bring that up. Yeah, because I don't think that D'Amico Ryans makes that move on his own, to be honest with you. I think he would give it to the end of the season. And if it doesn't get better before so the now, okay. end of the season, then he would let Bobby Sloak walk. So you bring up a great point. And off of that one, you know, take, we could go off on two different directions. One of them, you said it when he had to be a change from ownership, right? Mm -hmm. You think Kyle and Hannah McNair are happy right now? You think they like getting embarrassed in those battle red uniforms on primetime football? Absolutely not. We know how involved this ownership is. We know how mm -hmm. much, you know, trash talk we get from Hannah McNair every time someone brings up the Tennessee Titans. I can 100% guarantee that they are not happy with this and here's the thing i've been mentioning this the past couple of hours well since we lost right mm -hmm. you know who you have on monday night football next week a dak prescottless you have a <laughs> dallas dak cowboys prescottless but take that away you have the dallas cowboys in no. jerry's world nick what's gonna happen if you get embarrassed there what's gonna happen if you go scoreless in the second half, because that's what they've showed us the past four games is what they're willing to do. Then, oh, my God, all hell's breaking loose. I don't yeah. think they want to get there, man. And I I know they're not happy. And then you I, see, I don't then think you they are Demico, either. Right. Like, yeah, if he does not fix this now, I have an issue. So, Ruben, I don't think that they are happy. I don't think anybody's happy. But here's the difference between fans and ownership. Ownership cannot overreact they cannot pull the trigger too quickly they can't react on emotion and that's okay for us to do that's okay for the media to do but once you have an organization when they start running this organization like fans then we're gonna have a problem bro that's the problem that the dallas cowboys have because their owner jerry jones as great of a businessman as he is he is a fan bro he is not a football mind and so i think cal mcnair's not a football mind he's, he's not, not that's baby. why that's why this is what i'm saying I don't think D'Amico makes that move without management saying something. I don't think management or ownership is going to tell him to make that move. Then we have a problem, right? So here's the thing, Nick. Let me ask you a question. Was mm -hmm. it a good move by Chicago today to change offensive coordinators? Chicago's a train wreck, bro. I'm not going to model well, Chicago bro, I'm, I'm, as what another question. team do should do. Do you think it was right for them to change their offensive coordinators? I think that Chicago needs a new head coach. Uh, That's what 100 percent agree, but they were they made a at right at this decision point they're grasping for straws. Play callers, of right? course, because Lions, I think Iberflus right? knows like that his 40, job is in danger, so he's got to do something. Slowick's not going to be here next year, brother. Like, no, he's not. Like. That like that's also the thing that is, is is tying into this situation. He's not going to be here next year. He's not calling plays here next year. That's a fact. Yeah. You have the coach in waiting. You have Gerard Johnson right there who got interviews for offensive coordinator's job. Now, here's the thing, and I think we're kind of distant on this idea. I feel like you think because we changed the play caller, the entire offense is just thrown out the freaking window. Um, I would agree and disagree because I think there are some moments where this offense looked good, but there's also some moments where the offense looks bad. And that's why I think a change needs to happen because given the fact that you're still in the race, bro, you're still in like the top five in terms of seeding, and you have you still have an opportunity to make some noise. Mm -hmm. And if we know Bobby Slowick's not going to be here next year, if we know that if it comes to a decision, you know, if if they're asking me right now, Ruben, it's the off season. Do you want Bobby Slowick calling plays? Yes or no? I'm gonna say no. Right. And we have the coaching waiting right there. Why, why not take the risk? What if it works for the Chicago Bears? What if their offense takes off? It worked for the Detroit Lions. Now Ben Johnson is considered one of the greatest offensive minds in the NFL and is going to be in the head coach next year. Yeah, but do you think that's the exception more than the rule? Most teams who are firing staff in the middle of the season. Staff. Like, I don't like okay, when I mean get rid of Bobby Slow. I mean, you could take away play calling duties from him, mm -hmm. right? Let him go in the offseason or let him go somewhere else. But you could relinquish his play calling duties, right? Okay, let's take away the word fire. Relinquish his play calling duties or give other coaches like Gerard Johnson or Coach Laser more say in this offense. Because what Bobby Slowick has been showing you that he cannot adjust in the second half. And when he goes in front of the camera and say there is not one thing different that these defenses are doing in the second half, I, yeah. I I don't agree with that. You're telling me no one adjusts this, Bobby? 
Yeah. And this is when you go back and have the conversation where, you know, he's he's never played the game of football. Yeah. Bobby Slovak's a film guy, a PFF guy. Yeah. Ruben, I want to share a video really quick. Now, you're probably not going to be able to see it on your end, okay. uh, but you'll hear the audio. And I just want to share this video. Um, it's from Pro the EPA thing. It's from for Pro Football Network. And they talk about that, right? Because I they, they I, talk about his uh, his third and long play okay, calling. Cool, yeah, cool, give me yeah. just a second, and I'm gonna play it real quick. You'll be able to hear it, but the audience will be able to see it. No this worries. is third down and ten. Usually, you have to pass it to be successful in this situation, but the Texans have a different mentality. They will run it no matter the down and distance. Second and long. That's another passing down, but the Texans again show no fear handing it off. Each one of these inefficient plays has some sort of effect on the Texans scoreboard, but what is that effect exactly? EPA is a stat that tries to assign a point value to every single play. When you calculate how that negative eight yard run affects the Texans chance to win, it's about equivalent to taking 1.8 points off the score. In total tonight, EPA estimates that the Texans lost six points of value trying to run it on a passing down. Since October started, the Texans have run more on passing downs than any other team. Over that time period, they also lead the league in estimated points lost because of these runs. If you expand the time frame to the beginning of this season, they still lead everybody in this unfortunate category. Mm -hmm. Going back to the beginning of last year, they still lead the league in this category. Bobby Slowick's offense has lost almost 50 points of value going back to 2023. Running it in unideal situations, it's getting to be an outlier number. The next worst team in this category is the Jets, but they are substantially more efficient at this than the Texans have been. Bro, I'm, I'm so happy you brought that video up because that should only let you know right now that this offense is a problem. Yeah. And, you know, Nick, right, um, I understand, bro, good teams don't do this, you know, midway in the season. We got to wrap our minds around the fact that this might but not this be a good team right now. Good, brother. This might not be a good team. I mean, well, because, is, of because, because of the, the offense, because of the offense. You have an elite defense, Nick. I mean, a mm -hmm. defense that is a Super Bowl caliber defense, like – Five interceptions against the number one offense, against a very good offensive line. You also made Josh Allen look ridiculous. Sub-30 rating off of 40 passing attempts. You made Caleb, like, at home, this defense is elite. Mm -hmm. And you are without Anderson Jr. The only thing's holding you back is this offense, Nick. And you mentioned it's not just one area. If it's not penalties, it's the fact that they can block. If it's the fact that they can block, it's your coordinator not adjusting to the second half, not knowing when to pass or run the ball. Yeah. And if it's not that, it is your quarterback throwing two interceptions. Dude, I said in my video, Bobby Slowick didn't throw those two picks. No, he did not. But here's the thing. When your offense has been garbage all season, things like this just only make you even more mad because yeah. now it's like, damn, it's I know this is going to be bad, but yeah. CJ, I got CJ. And I think you mentioned this just a couple of weeks ago. What happens when CJ has a bad game or yeah. has a bad couple of throws? Right. And we saw it, you know, in the second half against Detroit. And yeah, that's the problem, man. You're counting on as great as CJ is, he's still a second year player, and he has to be that's what's crazy, bro. We feel like he's a he has four, to be, five year veteran, he has to be perfect for this team to win right now. The defense has to be perfect for this Ooh. team to win right now. Ruben, I've come on to your side, man. As much as I hate to see people overreact and say fire, I, I hate how loose. <laughs> that fans are with other people's jobs, bro. Because if somebody was coming after your job, you'd probably be on the defensive, right? Well, I'm going to say one thing. <laughs> when it comes to, you know, for example, we do this, right? Anyone wants to come over and try to take our spots, and they're going to have to outwork us yeah. to get up here and take our spots. This is a competition yeah, yeah. at the end of the day, what we're doing. We don't get paid millions like those NFL guys do. That's true. So, I mean, you know, I'm on the mindset of, you know, if you're not doing what you need to do, if you're not on all tens and fours, then get out of here. Yeah, yeah. Like, what did, hey, you. Nick, what did D'Amico tell the rookies? We're not waiting for you. Yeah. Bobby Slowick, 
we're not waiting for you. I hear you, man. I, I, as, as I watch that video really put things into perspective for me that this isn't just a this year problem. It's not just the last four games problem. Oh, you didn't see that video before? Uh, I just recently, that, that video came out right yeah, after the, Yeah, it just uh, came out, but like, did you just see it today or? I saw it yesterday. Bro, when, when I when saw I was it, happening. I was fuming. I was, <laughs> yeah. because cause the dip is from last year but, to this year, bro. Yeah. It's Stefan, Mixon, and all these adjustments, and you're worse? This is what I want to ask you, though. Um, Because, yes, we all point to Bobby Slug because he's the offensive coordinator and we know he calls the plays. Mm -hmm. How much culpability does D'Amico Ryans have? Because his mentality, his mentality, mm -hmm. uh, what I will say about the majority of those third and distance that they're running the ball, they're within Kaimi Fairbairn's field goal range. And I feel like D'Amico Ryans is comfortable. Let's just kick a field goal. I know my defense is going to ball out. The mm -hmm. problem is, is that once again, you're putting this defense in a situation where they have to be perfect. They have to be absolutely perfect. And unfortunately, there was a couple of plays on uh, Sunday night where they weren't perfect and they had some injuries. So there's got to – we've, we've already talked about how the personnel is not going to change. So that automatically – when you say, hey, something's got to change, unfortunately, man, that's that takes us to the coaches. And I'm not sitting here – look, man, I saw people talking about fire D'Amico Ryans. That oh. is insane, bro. That is absolutely nuts. Okay. Oh. And I listen, man, I know I'm probably more patient than the average fan. To me, I feel like this is a maturation, a process. Honestly, I'm probably in the minority here. If you finish 10 and six on this schedule compared to the schedule you had next year, last year, to me, that's a gain. That's actually a plus because we know this that this schedule has been more difficult than the one before. Is it going to be about is it going to be a disappointment championship or bust? That's what we said. That's what that's we said. That's what Ruben Nick. said. That's what Ruben said. No, that's what we said. No, I said you win two playoff games or bust. Like I'm okay, tired so of if you win two playoff games. Where you at? You don't win the, the AFC. AFC. You're in the AFC Championship game. No, but on. I thought you said you wanted them to win it or bust. No, you gotta get, bro. You gotta get win to your it. first ever division matchup. You feel okay? That's why yeah, I yeah, said yeah. Getting to so, the yeah. AFC Championship, which means. You win it. That it's AFC Championship. Okay. Or I misunderstood that, that. I thought you meant they need to win the AFC Championship. Oh no, 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 dude. I mean, I can't ask them to go win something that they've never won before. That's what right. I'm saying. When you do all the moves you did in the off season with Rookie of the Year, Defensive Rookie of the Year, you're thinking you can go places. And the fact yeah. of the matter is, you can still go places. You can like the season's not over, ladies and gentlemen. We're no, not in the postseason. We're not in the playoffs. You yeah. still have an opportunity to get this fixed, and you are seeing other teams do it. The NFL is crazy, saw one bro. Of your team, huh? I said the NFL is crazy. How quickly you can fall. I mean, the Bobby bro, Slowick what? dissension has been <laughs> it's been mind-boggling, man. But at this point, I can't defend him anymore, bro. Like no, your you the offense them. has been banging their heads into a wall, and it's the same thing every week. And it's it's tough to now, you know, I I I think CJ needs to be allowed to have a bad game every once in a while. Oh, um, for sure. You know overall he's been pretty good i don't think he's been when people say sophomore slump like that doesn't mean that your quarterback is trash that means like okay the nfl's made some adjustments now we got to give your quarterback a chance yeah. to adjust to the adjustment right and i i understand the nfl is not for long and but to me this is this is a maturation process but to salvage this season i think you're right man i think there's gonna have to be a if it's not a firing of Bobby Slug, like you said, shake up in who's calling plays, a shake up in, I, I don't know, man. But I, I wish I could say I was optimistic, but just based on the language we're hearing from D'Amico Ryan's, I don't know that we're actually going to see that. Does that put D'Amico Ryan's in the hot seat if he maintains the status quo for the rest of this season? I don't want to say hot seat, man, but it feels like we, you know, we got to start to question D'Amico. And if he has that, like, you know, I got my people that I'm willing to, you know, ride or die for. And, you know, that's all fine and dandy when you are an NFL player. But when you are a head coach, like, no, 
It needs to be the guys who need to be out there can get the job done. If we're not waiting for you, then we're not waiting for you, right? Don't send me these mixed mixed signals. And if we don't see a change, if we still see Bobby Slow and Colin plays throughout the season and we still see the same problems, Nick, because, okay, for example, let's say Bobby Slow goes out there and we see this offense change in the second half, right? They're putting up points. Okay, cool, we got dealt with. The players' meetings worked. But if you don't make this change and you're still having those issues, yeah. I'm going to have to look at D'Amico and be like, what's going on? Oh, man. I, my idea was to come on this show and not in defense. Was I lagging, bro? Was I good? No, you're good. You're good. Oh, thank you, man. Because like, when you got quiet, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just lost in thought and listening to what you're saying. Because, you sucks, know, doesn't it? my idea was to come on this show and and call out the overreaction. And I, I still do think there is some overreaction. Listen, with all due respect. To John and Lance on ESPN 97.5, um, those dudes are legends. But I don't have to agree with everything they say. They got on the radio yesterday and said that this is a loss that Houston Texans fans will never forget. I think that's a little <laughs> bit of hyperbole, bro. It's a regular season game, man. I could understand because, you know, the last time we felt like this was the game against the Kansas City Chiefs. And, bro. That was a playoff game, man. But it's but, – if you see the way the team lost, which also, was... Also, go ahead. I'll, I don't want to sure. talk over you. I mean, I'm not saying, you know, this loss is, you know, the worst I've ever seen. The worst loss i ever seen in the, in the and, you know, and the loss that affected me the most was the Baltimore Ravens playoff game with uh, with with the TJ Yates as your quarterback. And, of course. you know, I cried after that. Of course. Game, right? <laughs> but, but listen, man, this is what I'll say. I predicted the Detroit Lions to win this game because in reality, and we're not talking about the team that we hoped and thought the Texans were going to be. Based on who the Texans have been, they had no business winning that game versus Detroit. I don't care that they were at home. I don't care that they had the battle red uniforms on. They really had no business winning that game, which is why when you add the injuries on top of it, like that's why I didn't predict for them to win. So that's why it's so disappointing that they got up 23 to 7. But at the end of the day, that's why they play four quarters. The Texans didn't choke this game away because the Texans were who they have been for the last several weeks. So does it hurt that they lost in the fashion they did? Absolutely. Is it surprising that they lost in the fashion that they did? No, it's not. And that's why I say it's not a choke job. Um, And at the end of the day, if this team is going to be the beat up on the bad teams and lose to the good teams and, you know, limp into the playoffs and lose, you know, win a first round home game, lose on the road in the second round, then right now everything is par for the course. But I know that Houston Texans fans are tired of that. But that's just a little and they want mentality, something to, man. And I saw that I'm just tweet. saying the reality though. Yeah, of I mean, what it and is. I saw that tweet from DJ like like you know, like I know this loss is big, but you can still get to the division by, you know, just beating the guys who I mentioned earlier in this episode. And it's like, yeah. dude, I've seen that before and I know how it ends. I yeah. know how it ends with me being upset that in the divisional round I lose. And I, yeah. and you know, you're thinking and you see a new Houston Texans team in quarters one and two on Sunday night football against the Detroit Lions. Yeah. You saw 23 points. You saw, you know, the the next head coach of a team on the other side frustrated. You saw Dan Campbell look frustrated, and you're just like, this is Houston. This is finally what we've been waiting to see. And then it hits you once again that we're not ready to take the next step forward. And it's yeah. like, man, it was a tough and that's one, why, bro. That's like, why I, yeah, I went into this season with that uh, cautious optimism because of knowing everything we knew about just the process of doing this, man. It, it's very rare to go from two wins – 10 wins, win the Super Bowl, man. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible, but I expected this team to be better than it was last season. So far through 10 weeks, they don't look better. They don't feel better. And I understand the competition is raised, but your level of play and your talent level raised as well. So it does kind of feel like same old Texans. It's it's, it's tough to say. What I will say, though, is that um, if, if they do make a change... And let's say let's say Bobby Slowick is no longer the play caller. They give it to Gerard Johnson, um, and the offense still struggles. I think there has to be there has to be a spotlight put on D'Amico Ryan's. I'm not saying he should be in the hot seat. They gave the man a, 
a six year contract because they want him to build something. Well, and this two, is what we talked two about. Two years bro. isn't isn't long enough to build yeah. something. Um, but I think there's gonna have to be some real talk about just his added, his his approach. I know you're a defensive minded coach, but your approach of play tough defense and skim by these games and win at any cost, like yes, obviously you want to get the dubs. Um I don't think it's win at I any think- cost with Domingo. You know, I think it's just barely make it, right? But when I say win at any cost, I mean it doesn't matter if it's by if they could give you a half oh, okay, a point. Okay, okay, if you, okay. If they you, could give you. you a half a point win, <laughs> Domico, it. Domico would take it. Take it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. I mean, and it's just that's not how the the best teams in the NFL are operating right facts. now. Facts, facts. Other dude, than like, other dude. than Tom. Um, Tom Coughlin. You but dude, you have Dan Camber on the other side Tom willing Coughlin. to vote I'm for it about... on fourth and thirteen, fourth and whatever. Tom Coughlin's he retired. has that killer, <laughs> you know, that killer instinct. Yeah. No, the, I'm talking about the coach of Pittsburgh. Tom yeah, Coughlin. Mike Tomlin. Mike Tomlin. I said Tom uh Coughlin. Mike Tomlin, somehow, some way, uh, he continues to win football games the way he does. Never had a losing record. And yeah, and that maybe that's the type of coach D'Amico aspires to be. I don't know. Um, but you've got a franchise quarterback. You've put so much investment into the offensive side of the ball. Uh, you got to find a way to make it work better than it's working. And if you are being too predictable or you keep running your your head into that same wall over and over and over, um, it's kind of cliche. It's not the actual literal definition of insanity, but it is something that people often say. If you're doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result, then you are insane. And Man, I, I wanted to come on this show today and be like, no, nah, it's not time to fire Bobby Slowick. But, it man, is. it's getting harder and harder to to defend it, man. It just really is. And uh, I don't we, know, man. Here's the thing. You got the Cowboys coming up. I don't think he's scared, going to, brother. I don't think he's going to get fired before the Cowboys game. When I did, when the schedule came out, all things being equal, I actually picked the Texans to lose this game. And a lot of Texans fans were not happy with me. Keep in mind, I thought the Cowboys would be better than they are. And obviously, without Dak Prescott, if you lose this game and Dak Prescott's not there, yeah, um, somebody's going to have to go. And, and, and you don't want to get there, bro, because then you will get embarrassed three games in a row on yeah. primetime television. And yeah. we were crying and moaning that we didn't get any primetime games and, you know, last season with the new quarterback and a new coach. Well, now they give you the primetime games, yeah. and you have shown me these performances. You're throwing up some duds, man. Like, oh, so, yeah. So, I, I, dude, I, they, they, so not get embarrassed against Dallas. Let's put our, let's put our minds in the frame. We're going to step out of the fan for a minute. Okay. And we're on the team. We're the coaching staff. We're the team. We're players on the team. What they have to be thinking to themselves is get in the playoffs at any cost, and you hope. You know, even if 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 you limp in at ten and you know ten and six, nine and seven, whatever, you're hoping that by the time you get to that second playoff game, that the team that you are, the way you're playing, is not reflect your record, right? If you go in at ten and six, you hope the team that gets in is not really a ten and six team. They've improved to the point that they're really better than what their record says, right? Mm -hmm. Um, that's what you're hoping for, at least. Um, you're just trying to stack up as many wins as you can, get to the dance, and be playing as good a football as you can by the time you get to the playoffs. That's their mentality, and whatever if that's they ha- their mentality, then then we got the wrong coach and staff because our mentality is what D'Amico Ryan said in his you know at, at the beginning of the season. Mm-hmm. Our goal is to every day get one percent better, and then right. when we look up and see ourselves there. We know it was because of our hard work. And, you know, that, you know, um, of course, that's probably what Bobby thinks, right? But that's settlement. And if you do want to get 1% better, then you need to make a change. And I hope that's not their idea. I hope that's not their ideology, bro, because that's the yeah. same old. Well, I think we're Houston saying the same and, thing, and just in a different not what way. I want. You have, that's what I'm saying. You hope the team is getting better, regardless of what the record says. Like I said, I mean, right now, I think through this amount of games, 10 games, I'm pretty sure most Texans fans thought they'd be better than six and four. So what I'm saying is regardless at this point, you just need to get better at playing football. You're probably making the playoffs. So what I'm saying is this team, if they go in at 10 and six 
or if they go in at nine and seven, they need to not be playing like a 10 and six, nine and seven football team by the time they get there. They need to hopefully be dominating on both sides of the ball, not just one side of the ball. And what is it going to take to get to that? Is it going to take getting um, moving on from Bobby Sloick? Uh, I, I don't know the answer to that. I hope that they figure it out, whether it's keep him, let him go, let somebody else call the plays. I hope they figure it out because if we get to the end of this season and it's the same old, same old, it's going to be a failure of a season. Like there's no doubt about it. And my fear is that they're going to blame the injuries on, well, if we had Stefan, no if Nico that. hadn't missed f- uh, five games, I mean, there's already, unfortunately, what I see as some built in excuses for this team. Um, and we'll get, we'll find out if, uh, we talked about ownership earlier. We'll talk. We'll find out. Like, are they the type of owners that are going to accept that, or is this going to be a, a brand new, different regime that's that's running this organization? Mm. We'll find out, man. But um, um, the Cowboys game, mm, I, I just don't see a scenario where they lose that game. But you know, I don't see one either. Um, which because is, this is what I the mean, Texans do. They beat bad win. teams. They beat bad teams, and they look really good against bad teams. This is what I, they do. I feel you, but I'm just saying, bro, if you know, if it happens and you are embarrassed <laughs> on prime time against Big Brother, dude, it's yeah. it's gonna be real crazy here in Houston. I'll, I'll be right? on the fire Bobby Slowick train with you. Bro, it's gonna be happens. fire everybody, dude. I, like the type of reaction you're gonna get, you know, that's just <laughs> yeah. that just tells you how much this rivalry means with the Dallas Cowboys, right? No, I don't so, want to start talking about firing D'Amico Ryan's until he's well into his fourth season. Just man, you know we can't have that conversation until sure. he's well and I'm into not, his And I'm not going to get to the fire D'Amico, you know, any any time soon. I am a yeah. firm believer of D'Amico Ryan's. Um, I it I took it took his, how he handles his his staff. Is he a? I am going to basically fail with you, or I'm going to say, you know, hey. I'm sorry, this is not working. You got to go. Bro, that's the culture he came up in, though. He His coaches, think about who his coaches were. He had Gary Kubiak. He had uh, the guy who's coaching Kansas City right now. Why do I do this? I always forget names. Andy Reid. He had Andy Reid in Philadelphia. Those are dudes who rode with their guys. Like, it took, it took Gary Kubiak damn near getting fired before he finally hired Wade Phillips to run his defense. He kept running with his boys, his guys, and finally something had to give. And as soon as he got a real defensive coordinator in there, uh, the Texans took off, man. Like you said, without a without a Matt Schaub injury in that 2011, that, that was the Texans, in my opinion, best opportunity to win a Super Bowl since uh, what we thought was, you know, we were going to have this season. Um, but that's just... That's the, that's the lineage that he came from, man. I think he's going to ride or die with his guys, man. And at the end of the day, that is his choice. Um, and he's going to have to live with the consequences. You know, if he keeps riding, live, riding or dying and he ends up dying, then, you know, maybe he'll be comfortable with that. I don't know. Uh, I just don't see him as the type of guy. I know Bobby's his guy, man. I, I don't see him cutting that dude loose before the end of the season. But if they lose to the Cowboys, man, there's going to be some pressure on him to do something. Dude, I feel Something's like there gonna should have to be get already him. pressure now. And, um... We'll just see how the season plays out. You obviously don't want that. No. Um, I already have my eyes set on a play caller. Uh, whether or not he's going to become available in the offseason is a different question. But um, I'm Dolphins waiting coach. for Mike McDaniels, uh, my boy from the Dolphins, yeah. to potentially get fired. Uh, that's who I think could save this Houston Texan offense next season. But, uh, you know, that's another conversation for another day. The Miami Dolphins want, dude, I've been watching their mm. season all year. I've been watching them since last year. Hope, you know, praying yeah. on their downfall. But let me ask you this, man, really quick. Um, what do you think about the O line? It just, because when you I were mean, talking about better it, better pass protection wise, when but you it were was talking about the coach, of your run defense being like significantly worse. So, you know, they still suck. However, you needed to make a change, which yeah. is kind of the kind of the theme that we are is where, If we see a change, we know that they are indeed watching what we're watching. They are indeed understanding the weight of, you know, of what this season can potentially be. We were complaining about the offensive line and we saw Ken, I'm sorry, Kenyon Green get benched. Unfortunately, came back. But then we saw a new starting left guard next week. Well, it was Kenyon Green after he got hurt. 
And, you know, they've made changes. So we yeah. just need to see more changes, man. You can't get complacent. If you tell me 1% better is what you got to get, you know, to get there, then, you know, how do you get 1% better today? Yeah. I, I, the reason I asked that question is because as I was listening to you talk about, well, this is the guy who's going to save the offense on the coaching side of it. I was like, well, at this end of the day, we still have the same, you know, personnel. And uh, honestly, I wasn't surprised that they started struggling versus the run because that was kind of the only thing that Kenyon Green was decent at. Mm -hmm. um, and when Patterson and Scruggs were playing the positions that they're playing in this game, when they moved Scruggs to guard and had Patterson at center, well, that's the same group that struggled to run the ball last season. So honestly, none of that was surprising either, which is why, man, I was hella disappointed that they that they gave up that game. But after that yeah, initial sure. dis after that initial disappointment kind of started to wear, I mean, it didn't wear off, but like once I had a chance to reflect, I was like, the Texans had no business winning this game. I should have never thought they were going to win this game just because they are who they have been. And that's that's the unfortunate part about it. Um, but I, I I still I don't know what it's gonna take, man. I just want to see it get better. And I have optimism that this is the coaching staff that hopefully whether they look Bobby in the eye and say, look, man, you got to do something different. And that's how I don't know how much Bobby Sloick is, you know, going at the pace that D'Amico Ryan's wants him to go. Is D'Amico Ryan saying, hey, let's just run the ball here and kick a field goal? Or is that Bobby Sloick's call? No, I mean, why I is CJ Stroud not able to walk up to the line and see that there's seven men in the box? And he should probably throw a pass, and he's still handing it off and letting Joe Mixon run into a brick wall. Have they not given him that flexibility? Is he not reading defenses well enough yet to do that? That's a whole nother discussion that we could probably do a whole nother episode on. You know, it but, brings you back to the conversation that a lot of people had right before you hired D'Amico. Do you want an offensive-minded coach who is going to develop your quarterback, or do you want to have a rotating door every other year of an OC? Mm -hmm. And you know, the caveat is if you have a rotating door at OC where well, your offense is good and you have a good quarterback. So, you know, we're getting those conversations right now, and I've already seen those about this is what happens when you have a defensive-minded coach. You have an elite, you know, defense. However, your offense, you know, it sucks. And right now – Dan Campbell's a defensive-minded coach. And, and who does the, he have, uh, you know, opposite of him? Ben Johnson. Yeah, and he also has a very good offensive line. So and let's how not – how did Ben Johnson get there? <laughs> Because they had to make a change. They had I to make you, a brother. change in week nine. Yeah. And Texans just follow the footsteps, man. Just, you know, just try something new. Yeah. I got to hand it to you, Ruben. Like I said, I came on this show looking to say that it's crazy to say fire Bobby Sloak, but I, I can't defend it anymore, man. It's no, just. No, you can, bro. But I mean, like, I understand, you know, like a lot of the talks are drastic and like the way some people talk about it is like the world's going to end. But like I said, bro, we only got 17 weeks. You know, yeah. seasons were already over in Halloween. Yeah. Of and course. the fact that we are not even in Thanksgiving yet right. and we are like, man, we know this team right now is showing us that they are going to lose in the division around because we've seen the way this story has gone before. Yeah. And you had an opportunity to prove everyone wrong on Sunday night football. And for the first two quarters, you were shocking the world. And yeah. I mean, everyone was looking to their friends like, bro, is this is this actually happening? Yeah. Are we shutting down the number one offense in the NFL? And then the second half happened. I want to say this, though. Go ahead. I'm not defending Bobby Sloak. But no. what did everybody say? Your play calling is too predictive. Stop running the ball on first down. First play of the third quarter. They don't run the ball. No, CJ Stroud throws an interception. That's what I'm saying, bro. And it's like, <laughs> it, you know, it's like it's like those moments where, you know, you're complaining about, you know, your teammate the entire time. And you're like, oh, you can't do this. You can't do that. Yeah, and man. then when they finally do it and you mess up. <laughs> <laughs> then it's like, what do you, bro? Like, what are you, like, yeah. you're complaining about me, but you know, look that, at what that you did pass, today. that interception with Tank Dell in the end zone. That, that play, interception, bro, that play was very, very similar to the play that they did last season versus the Cardinals, where CJ threw it over the top of the defender and uh, Tank was able to get a falling down catch in the end zone. The difference between those two plays was the throw. 
CJ Stroud threw a duck up there, man, and just it hung in the air and it got snatched. It wasn't a good throw. He well, had a few throw. bad throws in that game. No, for, um, you know, for sure. Which and is, so I'm not going to say that takes the heat off Bobby Slowick, but it should not. It's it one of those not. things where it's like, okay, we have some issues other than Bobby Slowick. So even yeah. if Bobby Slowick is no longer the play caller, there's still some things this team is going to have to address in order to get better come playoffs. That's all I'm but saying about that. Last, you know, I'm sorry. That game was like the broken clock is right twice a day, mm-hmm. you know, analogy. And that was it for me. Like, okay, yes, he just shot, had a bad game, but his offense has been horrible the entire year. So don't tell me, no. oh, now look what happens, you know, when Bobby, you know, is on it because it's been ass the whole season. Yeah, yeah. You know, it would have been different if, you know, let's say this offense was was working fine and then CJ just loses it just by those two INTs. No, we've seen this whole season that the offense isn't good. Yeah, yeah. So I don't want to hear people come in and say, oh, you know, you know, CJ was at a loss, you know, it was his fault. I know. I understand. I said that. Yeah, but it's not just one instance. You know, CJ has saved your butts more time than he's lost. Absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, you know, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to wipe it off. The mm-hmm. team's gonna get a little bit more rest. Monday night football in Dallas. You know, Dallas versus uh, Houston. That's always gonna be a hype game, no matter what their records are, no matter uh, what the scenario is. You know the. I'm pretty sure Dak Prescott's not going to be there, so that takes a little bit of the luster off of the matchup. But, hey, man, we've said it before. Texans can't help who's on their schedule. That's who's in front of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got to get a dub. This this was, this was is a definitely one of those uh, not must-wins that really are a must-win. Uh, no, this is a must-win because if you get embarrassed in, in your state, you get embarrassed against the guys who are known as your big brothers. Yeah. Dude, it's not going to go well. It's It's really not. Yeah, when I say must win, I mean as far as wins, losses, it's playoff positioning. Win. It's I mean, it's definitely bro, no. go, for us. It's a must win. Five. For anybody who's in the AFC South War Zone uh, group on Facebook, oh, that, it's that a garbage must. chat, dude. It was it was too much for me. Like they're more worried about getting the and and, and, it, and it's so disappointing that there's content creators yeah. in there, and I'm like, this is how you act. But yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, if you got if, during Thanksgiving, you don't want to sit at the table with your Cowboys family members. And have to swallow that L for sure. So it's a big game, man. And I'm happy. uh, I'm excited to still talk about it, man. I love that we have an opportunity to talk about Houston sports. The reason we get into these, uh, I don't want to say disagreements, but the reason we're so passionate about what we're talking about is because one thing that you and I have in common, Ruben, we love this football team. We love this city. And we want to rep to the fullest. And it just hurts our hearts, man, when on the national stage, they don't show the rest of the world why we feel the way we feel about this Houston Texans team because we know what they're capable of. We've seen what they're capable of. And I compare it to being a parent all the time, man. You know, your kids, when they disappoint you, it frustrates you. Sometimes they piss you off. Sometimes you want to smack them upside the head, but you always love them and you just want them to do better. So that's kind of how I feel about the Houston Texans. Hopefully they will do better come Monday night football. Uh, I'm looking forward to doing our preview show. Later this week, um, you guys, I want to remind you, if you're watching on ESPN Houston, we do a preview show for every game on Ruben's channel, which is 713 Houston Sports. I will make sure that his link tree is in the description so that you can find not only his YouTube channel, but all of his socials. He's on X, he's on IG, he's on TikTok. The man does daily Houston Texans content. You don't want to miss any of it. And you can find me at Houston Sports State of the Union podcast on YouTube. I will leave my link tree in the description as well so that you will have all of my socials and uh we just want you guys to keep rocking with this man i know this this season has had its difficult moments but hopefully you get a chance to come and talk to us listen to us talk get in the chat with us and then let it out and then you keep rocking for the h after that man so i'm looking forward to that ruben uh i'm so thankful for esp in houston allowing us to share their platform and talk about this houston texans team hopefully the next time we're on ESPN in Houston, sir. We're talking about a win over the Dallas Cowboys. Give the people something before we get out of here. Hey, man, once again, thank you all for we're here during the episode. We are age time to we're drawn, win or loss. And, guys, we just want to let you know, like, even though there's really no arguments here, you know, <laughs> we're just two dudes who, once again, love this football team. We let this team, we let this city affect us 365 days 24 hours a day yeah, year yeah. in year out right you brought up having a kid i don't have one yet but <laughs> you know i'm not you ready do have a baby to, the texans are your baby <laughs> i don't i'm not ready to introduce you know he or her to this life you know to this <laughs> houston texans life because yeah 
Ah, stressful. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't need two people stretched out in this house on a Sunday, but man, what you know, but that being said, thank you everyone who was a part of this episode. Um, yeah, shout out to ESPN, man. We've been rocking, we've been killing it. We're, you know, we've we're definitely being noticed. Let's keep it up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I I want to ask you one more question, Ruben, because yeah. you talked about how D'Amico needs to be able to have what it takes to fire his boy. So that tells me at any point, as much as you love me, if you feel like I'm slipping, mm. you're gonna say, Hey bro, uh, you're gonna have to get up out of here. <laughs> I'll give you one example, right? I used to be a manager at an AT&T call center. Yeah, yeah. And one of my best friends, you know, you know, at first he was rocking it, right? He was killing it. He was killing it. But you know what happens when you work with your friends? Right. You know, you know, it starts to slip up. They start to not care. Get comfortable. You know, I had to be a manager. I had to write the dude up. I had to have a tough conversation with them. And, you know, at the end of the day, I tell people this, you know, I'm all about making bread. Yeah. I'm all about making news. I'm all about making waves. And if you cannot do that, or if you're stopping me from doing that, then we have an issue. And, you know, it's always good to watch out for other people. And, you know, I'm always, you know, I am a ride or die too, until a certain extent, right? if that makes sense. Like I'm willing to help people to the very, very end. But when it start, you know, coming to, it could cost me something. Yeah. Then we're like, all right, man, I love you, but I don't love you that much. <laughs> However, you I know. You. We're not getting paid millions of dollars. Right. So, dude, this is this I is feel tough, you, big bro. dog. I'm a, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stay on my I'm gonna stay on my ish. That no, way man, you don't have to worry fantastic. about it. Dude, you're doing fantastic. <laughs> I'm gonna stay on it and then we don't have to worry about it. So I hope no, you guys will join us for our uh Monday night football preview on Ruben's channel, 713 Houston Sports, and then we will see you on ESPN Houston next Tuesday at 7 30. You guys, in the meantime, you know what I want you to do. You stay 10 toes down for the H. We love you. Good night. Good night. And then, you know what? It's always more fun to win with your boy than get in trouble with your boy, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Y'all, we'll see y'all next week.